So we're going to wrap up chapter 8 by looking at power. So by definition, power is just the change in the energy of a system as a function of time. So this is called the instantaneous power. It's a derivative of the energy with respect to time. And the average power is just a walk over the change in time. So for example, if you look at this example, so if I can calculate the walk, so how much walk do we need to do to move this object from this point to this point? And if I know the time that it takes to this, this, this crate to go from point A here to point B, then if I calculate the walk divided by the time, it gives me what the average power is. Now, we can also define the instantaneous value of the power is just the, so if you look at the limit as the time goes to zero of the walk of a change in time. So this is just given by the derivative of the walk with respect to time. Now we can also, so if you look at this equation right here, we know that we can write the walk down as the force times the displacement is the dot product of the force and the displacement vector. And so if we take this derivative here, so um, if we assume that the force is not changing as a function of time, so when you take the derivative of this equation right here, you only get the contribution that comes from the displacement that changes with time. So because the derivative of the, of the displacement with respect to time is just the velocity vector, so it means that I can write the power as a dot product of the force, force vector and the velocity vector. <clears throat> so these are some units for power. So, so power is given in watts. So one watt is equal to one joule per second, which can also be given as one kilogram meter square per second to the power of three. Um, there is other units for power. So for example, one horse power is equal to 760, um, 746 watts. And then there is a unit called the kilowatt hour. So one kilowatt hour is the energy. So it's just the energy that, um, so it's 1000 watt multiplied by one hour and one hour is 3600 seconds. So this is 3.6 times 10 to the power um, six joules. So in the United States, um, electrical energy is measured in, in units called the uh, kilowatt hour. So for example, if you take a look at your utility bills, you're going to notice that your utility, utility bills are always going to be given in terms of the, um, the kilowatt, kilowatt hour. All right, so now let's look at this example. This is example number 8.11. <clears throat> so we're going to look at the power delivered by an elevator motor. So in this example, we have an elevator uh, that has a mass. So an elevator car has a mass of 1,600 kilograms and is carrying passengers having a combined mass of 200 kilograms. And then it tells us that a constant force of friction of 4,000 newtons retards its motion. How much power must a motor deliver to lift the elevator car and its passengers at a constant speed of 3.00 3 meters per second? So to solve this problem, the first thing is I want to calculate the force of tension. So the, um, the elev elevator motor is going to generate this force to pull the elevator car. So this is the those are the two forces acting down so this is the m times g so this is the force of friction and this is the mass so this is the force of gravity acting on the elevator car so it's just the mass 1800 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second and this is the frictional force so if you solve this equation right here so again because the elevator is moving at a constant speed it means there is no um, the acceleration is zero so if the acceleration is zero, it means that the um, tension force must be equals to this, the sum of these two forces. So again, if you calculate that value right here, you get the tension force and then you calculate the power. 
just by taking the dot product of the uh, tension force and the velocity vector. So notice that because the tension force is pointing up and the velocity is also pointing up, when you take the dot product, it's just given by the magnitude of the force of tension times the magnitude of the velocity vector. So if you put that together, you get this quantity right here. If you plug in the values, you end up with a power of about um, 6.49 times 10 to the power 4 watts. Now let's look at the other example here. So for part B, it says that what power must the motor deliver at an instant the speed of the elevator is V if the motor is designed to provide the elevator car with an upward acceleration of 1.0 meters per second square. So now there is acceleration in the system. So when there is acceleration in the system, you say that the sum of the forces pointing up, so tension force minus F minus M times G is equal to mass times acceleration. So you calculate the force of tension. Um, so if you know what the force of tension is, then you can calculate the uh, power. It's just the uh, tension times the velocity. And if you plug in the values, you just get um, P is equal to 2.34 times 10 to the 4 times V. So V is that instantaneous velocity. So notice that this is not constant. It's changing as a function of time. So if you plug in the um, V equals to 3.0 meters, you just get this value here of 7.02 times 10 to the 4 watts.